Hello once again, it's David with Euro Motorcycles, back with you again this week with some uh, more basic information this time. Uh, but it was asked for on social media and some inquiries we got by email. So this week we'll be going over how to program your electronic speedometer that came out in 2017 and how to adjust uh, hydraulic steering damper or steering stabilizer for new riders. So without further ado, we'll get to that and I'll show you how to program a speedometer. Ready? The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the start switch is in the off position. And then you're going to come around to where the key is. And you're going to turn the ignition key to the on position, which is always straight up and down. After the diagnostic sweep, the majority of your information can be accessed by using the reset button on the left hand side. By selecting through this, you can go from the clock, which is currently on the uh, 24 hour clock, trip two, which is at 20.64, trip one, which is also at 20.64 because this is a new bike, the odometer, which is a rounded up number of the trip uh, at 20 miles, here you see SPD, which is speedometer, displays the speed in mile per hour. In this screen you see max RPM. This is actually not active on this speedometer. Here you see max speed of 57 miles per hour. This displays the highest speed active since the last reset option. Here you have the screen with the indicator TT. This is your total riding timer. It calculates the total riding time from the time the bike was new. Here you have the screen where it says HRTT. You'll notice this is all zeros. Now this function is also not used on the speedometer. Here you see the di digital voltage of the bike, which is currently at 11.8. Here you see the screen with the RT, which is the riding timer. This calculates the total running time since the last reset. Here you see the screen with AVG. Now this is your average speed meter. It calculates the average speed from the last reset. Here you have RPM, which is for a digital tachometer, not functional on this bike or on the speedometer. Now from here, there's only a couple uh, things that you can set, and that is your trip one and two. So say you wanted to set trip one back to zero, you simply hold and press the left reset button and it resets it back to zero. So the programmable settings can be accessed by pressing the left reset button and the right mode button simultaneously and holding it. Then you can access the programming screen. Now the first thing that will pop up is the 24 hour or 12 hour uh, option for the clock. So say you want it on 12 hour time, you can select by hitting the reset button to go to be a toggle between 12 and 24 hours. Now let's say we want to put it at 5 o'clock a.m. So we go 5, see how it's at the p.m.? We keep toggling through until we get to 5 a.m. The right button will put you over into the minutes and you go to zero. Now it puts you into your maintenance reminder setup. So this is indicated by, it says trip, but it's got the little wrench icon up in the right upper right hand corner. So for the first service, it's 500 kilometers or 310 miles. So we would want to toggle over to the the hundreds column, go up to three, toggle over, go up to one, because this is all in miles. Uh, the speedometer is no longer reading kilometers. And then now it puts you into this screen, which is actually tire circumference. Do not mess with this, just mode, hit the mode button to click out of it. And now that you're back at the hour screen, you can turn off the key and it will lock in those functions. Now the first generation steering dampener represented here by this 2013 
was a friction style dampening system which was pretty basic. You had the knob here and you adjusted it by turning it counterclockwise to loosen, clockwise to tighten. The function of it was pretty basic as you see demonstrated here. So the knob was connected to this threaded rod. This was attached to the bottom triple tree and then this friction disc was actually attached to the frame. This part would have moved with the triple tree. So as you tighten it, it put more tension on the friction disc and it tightened the whole steering neck assembly. You loosened it, it did exactly the opposite. In 2014, the first generation hyd hydraulic damper was re released. And although in appearance it looks like something you would see on a sport bike, internally, um, the valving, the viscosity of the fluid, the seals, everything about it was beefed up to handle the demands the sidecar would put on such an item. For Ural riders out there that have 2013 and older bikes that would actually like to update to a more modern uh, hydraulic damper or steering stabilizer, uh, there is actually a kit that utilizes this first generation damper and some bracketry that was created uh, to eliminate the friction disc and actually replace it. You do retain this knob as that goes down and captures this and then there's a, uh, a little pin on the original triple trees that's replaced and a bolt goes through to capture this and then the damper connects to that and then over on the sidecar side you have another little bracket that connects the other side of the damper and then you you can um, update to this style. This kit is avail available through your dealer and runs about $180 MSRP. So in 2018, uh, Ural introduced the Bitubo Gen 2 steering damper. Now this comes standard on all uh, 2018 and up Ural motorcycles. Um, and along with the name brand recognition, it also is 18 position adjustable instead of 16 like the uh, first generation damper or steering stabilizer. Uh, and along with that comes the um, the guarantee of a name brand for the quality of the of the product. Uh, additionally, Bitubo wasn't able to just take a part off the shelf and and offer it to us. This actually went through quite a bit of research and development as well to handle the loads that uh, a sidecar inherently puts on a stabilizer. What I recommend for both the Bitubo and the first gen steering damper uh, or steering stabilizer is while you're sitting on the bike, um, turn the adjustment knob all the way forward or towards the front tire to its first position. This is going to be the firmest or stiffest damping that you'll have. And turn it side to side and you'll get a feel for it. And then for new riders, what I recommend on the Gen 1 uh, being 16 position, uh, it'll be eight clicks on the Bitubo being um, 18 position. It'll be nine clicks. So turn it back halfway. Six, seven, eight, nine. So turn it back halfway. And this will be a good starting point to get used to uh, the feel of it, like in a parking lot, over speed bumps, going around your neighborhood a little bit. Um, but you're going to want to have some variety in what you're doing so you can experience it in left-hand turns and right-hand turns. As you increase in speed from that middle position, say 35 to 40 miles per hour, you can click it forward one click, 40 to 45, another click, and so forth. That way, by the time you get up to freeway speed, you're at the upper end of the damping potential of the steering stabilizer. Again, this isn't written in stone. It's no hard and fast rule that you must abide by. Uh, it's just a good baseline, particularly for new riders to start. Uh, so they get a feel for their particular outfit, for the alignment that is uh, dialed into it, maybe for the suspension settings that you have your bike at, uh, or even for the load that you, the payload that you're gonna carry. Well, that wraps up the video for this week. I hope there was some information in there that you can use. And as always, if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave comments below or suggestions for future videos. And I always appreciate if you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you're watching on Facebook, um, give us a like and we'll talk to you next time.